we've just delivered 12 of these cows to this field in our latest conversion that's designed specifically for businesses and agriculture. It is our Morris Miner. Okay, we didn't actually deliver the cows here, but it is designed for those purposes. This is a really unique conversion that we've been the privilege to get our hands on recently. And I'm so excited to tell you more about the details of our Morris Miner conversion featuring our new Universal E20 conversion pack. Let's jump into it. So I'll show you a bit more about what's under the hood in a little bit. But first, I want to show you what's going on back here. Not your traditional Morris. It's not a saloon or a convertible, but this one is a purpose-built, original style van. It was designed intentionally for those smaller businesses, getting around smaller roads, maybe even village tracks, things like that, to be able to deliver goods to uh, people in the local vicinity. And that's exactly what this is actually going to be used for. This is a farm shop that wants to be able to provide deliveries to their local customers and they thought this was the perfect vehicle and to be honest i think i agree it's got such huge space in the back here lovely big cube space we've done some of the restoration work in the back here as well by sorting out the wood on the base the carpets and touching up the paintwork around the insides as well but we're really pleased with how that's turned out so let's talk about the electric conversion now we've managed to keep all of that in the front where the engine used to be to make sure the weight ratio is absolutely perfect. And it's turned into something that we're calling our universal E20 battery pack. That is actually a battery pack and a motor gearbox all in a combined unit that's perfect for vehicles like this that were front engine, but rear wheel drive. So I want to talk to you about the universal E20 pack that was developed to fit into this vehicle. Tell me a bit more about, I'm gonna take that out. Tell me a bit more about the nature of what makes it universal, I suppose. What, what's kind of come out of that development process? Um, so the universal battery pack is comprised of eight LG modules. Uh, and the beauty of that kind of configuration is that it's, it's basically a perfect cube in a lot of ways. Um, our um, control board, our high voltage junction box, if you will, sits beautifully on top of that space which takes care of all the contactors and the battery management system, um, which just makes the whole thing one neat little package, really. And then underneath the vehicle, obviously, we've developed this for the Morris Minor, and so it's attaching onto the original mounting points for that. But not every vehicle is going to be the same. Mm. So can you tell us a bit more about how we got around that problem? Yeah, I mean, the, the modules themselves are attached to a, a coolant plate, which is unnecessary in this setup, but it does add structure in it. And, Obviously, structure is, is very important when you come to any kind of vehicle. Um, so that comprises the internal structure, and then those then attach to a, to a subframe that sits simply underneath, which has um, capability to kind of attach to any extra bit of subframe that can, that can mate to whatever kind of vehicle, um, as long as it's got a general kind of cube shape in the front of it, which is a decent amount, in my opinion. So tell us more about the motor and gearbox setup that we've got in this Morris Miner. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned before, we've got the controller which sits on top of the battery box, but honestly, that could go anywhere, really, depending on the vehicle, um, which goes to our AC34 motor, which is then mated to a custom gearbox that we've had made, which is then um, going to a, a lovely little prop shaft, really. It's a replacement prop shaft for this vehicle, um, but it's now capable uh, of over 60 brake horsepower, uh, which is fantastic for a, a nippy little vehicle like this, um, which is obviously is, is creating a, a front engine but rear wheel drive vehicle. And so how much of the drivetrain is still original? So we've got gearbox, we've got prop shaft, and then what? There's a differential at the back that yep. we've not touched, essentially. Um, that goes to the wheels, and there's leaf springs and all sorts that, to be honest, I didn't want to touch at all. Um, they're working as they are, um, so if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, perfect. Stand by that philosophy. Otherwise, you can be pulling a thread and yeah, opening no, cans of worms and other metaphors. Adding shock absorbers to a Morris Minor, which I don't want to do. Yeah, it's a bit. <laughs> and it sends the price crazy as well, doesn't yeah, it? Absolutely. So we try and keep the price really affordable for yeah. these kind of conversions. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about the price maybe in a little bit. Um, is there anything else that you want to tell us about the, the systems that we've got in here? Um, Tell us about the dash, actually. Tell us about what we've done in the interior that's been either modified or original. Yeah, I mean, the dash dial itself is entirely original. All we've had to do, really, is create some uh, 
ECUs that have turned a, a camber signal into a five volt variable signal. To Do you want to explain some of those words? I'm going to. I know, I know, I know. Um, the old fuel gauge worked on a variable five volt signal. Don't ask me how that worked. I assume there was a bob in the fuel tank or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now, obviously, there is no bob to go into a liquid unless you want to put it in the lithium, but that's not how it works. That's not how it works. Don't do that. <laughs> um, so then that simply all that's doing is turning that canvas message from the battery management system, which is saying you are 75% full, and then that turns the dial to the correct gauge. Uh, we've got a beautiful new system from Peterson, uh, who are creating our Speedo, uh, and they've done a great job on that. In this vehicle as well, we've also installed a heating system and of course a fan system to go with it, um, which is a, a, a really fantastic, neat, tidy little system uh, that's using high voltage to turn straight into heat through an element. Um, and then the fan's obviously blowing that up through the original holes. So you talked about fuel earlier, which of course we don't have anymore, but how do you refuel this electric classic car? Well, Kit, that depends on what you mean by fuel. Electrons can be fuel. Anyway, uh, sat underneath where we are right now, uh, we have a 6.6 .6 kilowatt TC charger, um, which is actually only about two foot away from the charge socket on the side of the van, which has made my wiring job a lot easier. Um, and that sits exactly where the petrol tank used to. Of course, it takes up about half the space, um, but I think I'm quite happy to leave um, that space empty just to leave the weight as far off the back of the vehicle so you can fit more stuff in. I'm here with Sam, a uh, customer of our Morris Minor conversion. Yeah, and it's beaming ear to ear as we just delivered it today. <laughs> Sam, tell me, first of all, what led you to think about an electric conversion in the first place? Well, I think um, the reason we have the vehicle is because we supply a local cafe with fresh organic veg. And so we want it to be as uh, green as possible with our credentials. Um, because of the distance between us and the cafe, uh, the electric conversion really made sense because it's not too far. So yeah, we were excited to bring a classic vehicle uh, into the modern era as we do our deliveries on a daily basis. Awesome. And what led you to come and talk to us at EDUP Services? Um, well, we've been in touch for a long time, actually, and we've yeah. tried to go a few vehicles, haven't we, yeah, uh, yeah. initially, but uh, it's all my fault that we didn't manage to get them going. But um, yeah, we were really impressed with um, your online presence and all the stuff that we'd seen um, over the years and uh, although this was a first for you I believe we were pretty confident that we would um, be in capable hands. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Amazing. Cheers. So thank you so much for watching that draws this video to a close. Um, if you've been interested in the stuff that we've been talking about then make sure you subscribe. We've got tons of content back in the catalogue to look at and also tons of future videos coming up very soon as well. If you are in the commercial space and you want something really unique to uh, cater to your business and your business needs, then get in touch because it could be something like a Morris Minor that would suit your business or potentially something like our more traditional conversions like a classic camper van. We already have kits available for classic campers that are combat compatible with both campers and crew cabs and pickups as well. Also, if you've got a classic car that may just be compatible with our new universal E20 pack, that's a front engine rear wheel drive vehicle, somewhere around the 1950s, 1960s, then make sure you hook us up and we'll be able to tell you if that's compatible with our new kit. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you again next time.